Okay. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this session. Uh, let me just get a confirmation from you all if you can hear me clearly and if you can see my screen. Great, thank you. Uh, so today's um, tutorial, second tutorial, is about um, topic modeling, uh, sentiment analysis, and um, time series analysis. We try to cover all these subjects, um, but I mean, hopefully, it will be in the time will be enough. Okay, so diving right into it, or rather, let me hear from you guys. So. So yeah, if someone can define for me like all the three or like any one of the three topic modeling, sentiment analysis and time series analysis, that would be great. Let's just, um, it's an afternoon session. So maybe the energy is a bit down, but let's uh, hear from you. What is your understanding about like these subjects, topic analysis, Sentiment analysis and uh, topic modeling, sorry, sentiment analysis and time series analysis. Anyone? No guesses. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, all right. Uh, um, can you hear me, people? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Saladin, I think the problem is in your on your side. Maybe try to rec uh, to disconnect and reconnect again. Uh, Sheila, go ahead. Um, hello. Um, I do know about topic modeling or sentiment analysis, but I can say something about time series analysis. Okay. So, um, time series analysis is a time series analysis is a statistical. It's a type of statistical analysis that involves um, looking at the trends of um, um, data. So it, after the analysis, you're able to get information on how the data has changed. For example, if you're doing something about drought, so for a time series analysis, it will show um, the changes of data, the changes of drought, sorry, from, for example, if you're doing assessing from 2001 to 2024, it will, so, it will show the changes in drought from 2001 to 2024. And it will be able to help us understand um, the causes and the reasons for that, that change and how that change has affected um, past and previous droughts. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah. So what Sila said is um, the correct. Uh, so yeah, so time series analysis is uh, basically analysis done on uh, data that changes with time, and uh, you want to see like uh, um, if you are doing some of the okay descriptive analysis, you are one you want to see the the trends with time, uh, but also you can do like um, predictive analysis and also try to like uh, do. Um, like modeling on your data and see like uh, if you can predict the future uh, values depending on the past values and like uh, like uh, partial dependencies of other variables as well but that's correct okay anyone wants to take a like a step at the topic modeling and sentiment analysis just a guess from the names you can like maybe tell what it is Okay, Abu Bak. Okay, so <clears throat> sorry. 
so sentiment analysis would be uh, to identify if the what is the tone of the text being uh, communicated for example <coughs> in our case it would be neutral negative or positive so mm -hmm. sentiment would be that and topic would be uh, like a recognition uh, uh, teams to extract the teams for what are being t talked about what is the ex the same as sentiment analysis yeah so. yeah okay anything more you want to add hello um okay uh Jamal, Jamal, uh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I will also uh, try to mention about both of the topics. Yeah. Uh, sentiment analysis is something that uh, studies about uh, the polarity of something, whether it's positive, negative, or somebody's review how towards something and ideas. Maybe it is voice text whatever it is uh, we can make it we can call it sentiment analysis or it is also known as uh, opinion mining uh, uh, identifying someone's uh, opinion towards uh, something maybe a product maybe uh, some news i may have positive thought negative thought or maybe i may have also neutral thought uh, we can call this sentiment analysis uh, regarding topic uh, uh, regarding the, the topic uh, it is maybe identifying or we may also call it uh, identifying the title for particular texts or for particular ideas we may have uh, three paragraph or four paragraph or we may have one book after studying about that book the algorithm may identify the topic for that particular uh, book, uh, so we call it uh, uh, that one. Okay, good, good. So these are good, good, good answers. Thank you. Um, yeah. So regarding this, like uh, being described as such, all of these three, like when you consider a machine learning algorithm that does these jobs. Can you identify uh, like the kinds of, of uh, machine learning algorithm? Like, is it like supervised learning or the, um, uh, unsupervised learning? What kind of it is? What kind of learning it is? Uh, yes, so what? And okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, for the sentiment analysis, it would be uh, some kind of supervised learning. Yeah. I guess. Yes, which kind? Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I said which which kind of for supervised analysis is it? Um, I didn't um, understand that. Right. Okay, fine. Uh, it's a classification. Uh, you can call it. Uh, but yeah, yes, you're right. And uh, what about the others too? Um, if. Um, you have some other answer? Hello? Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if I like, uh, do you hear me well? Or am I like my voice is um, it interrupted or okay. Uh, Jamal? Um, okay, may, may I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, regarding the algorithms for uh, sentiment analysis, mm -hmm. we can use uh, both or we can use a mixed or uh, a hybrid. Mm -hmm. For example, for sentiment analysis, we can use unsupervised or rule based uh, mechanisms, uh, a hybrid, as well as we can use. Uh, a pre-trained uh, model or a supervised uh, 
uh, or machine learning. Basically, uh, the supervised is also known as uh, machine learning. Mm -hmm. So we can use both for uh, both uh, activities. Okay. So we can use both, no problem at all. But the performance of them depends on the corpus that we prepare. The maybe varies based on the algorithm that we use. Uh, so uh, we can use both the algorithm supervised as well as unsupervised too. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. And this is like this is a good point. Like uh, the corpus would make a big difference, of course, when it comes to training the algorithm we choose also make a big difference uh but so good good intuition um or like good knowledge if you have like knowledge about it already uh so let's dive in um i'm kind of assuming that you uh, it's not easy for me to decide like uh, um if to consider you like you have some prior more knowledge about it or not but let's say like this is going to be kind of basic um in a sense assuming that you don't have a lot of knowledge uh, about these topics uh so we start with topic modeling which as identified by your colleagues right now is that um you said your r uh, is some kind of a clustering basically you have um um you, the data you have data and you want your algorithm to group similar words within the body of the text and identify like the topic the uh, of share the like topic within like um, covered within the, within the document or within the uh, input data so uh, okay well here I'm just like this is a definition why why what is the topic model used for useful for you use for like uh, it's used for like document clustering. You want if you have like unstructured, a huge amount of unstructured data, uh, con text textual data, of course. You want to like organize it in block depending on what topic they cover. Um, yeah, so is this like uh, the, the main use it for? Like it's used within other like. Um, Maybe for with search, um, help with search engine, well, help for search within databases or like for key selection. Uh, so here, like uh, we can discuss uh, like a basic uh, topic, modeling techniques These are different techniques that have different like, um, um, like, Okay, so when it comes to machine learning or even like uh, statistical methods, it will depend on different uh, uh, assumptions, different techniques, different algorithms are employed. And then uh, depending on that, like will be like different um, uh, efficiency uh, or performance in the end. So, uh, okay, um, let's say like uh, there is um, one called latent semantic analysis which is um, uh, taking an input of uh, document or, or each document is just like um, uh, uh, it's just text like um, each document is just like a, um, uh, like it's just um, uh, let's consider our data to be like a group of documents so each document is just text and uh, we like the this um, this technique will look for relationship between documents and the terms within each document. And uh, okay, this was introduced in the eighties. Um, and uh, um, so uh, when when it does the clustering, this technique it assumes that a similar word or words with similar meaning appear in similar documents. So it will measure, um, uh, it will construct, uh, it will depend on cosine similarity, which you, if you know what cosine similarity is, if you represent uh, words as vectors, and um, cosine similarity measures the similarity between words as uh, the 
cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So you have, of course, when considering text, okay, or a, a, any kind of data, but the context, uh, well, our algorithm doesn't uh, like uh, deal with text directly, right? So um, it has to be changed into numerical, um, uh, like, and the zero one values, but okay, so it has to be turned into numerical values first, and then um, uh, it can be like uh, treated. So uh, to turn our like uh, text va textual values data into uh, numerical uh, numerical data, uh, basically, um, like the algorithms will take each document. Uh, count uh, the words uh, like well identify the words within the document count like how many how much how how many times is that the words appeared within the document um and then it will represent uh, like uh, um document words as a matrix uh which is going to be a huge matrix and then it will reduce it using like this uh, like the Match the composition um, uh, a method, singular value decomposition. So I'm just, I know I'm saying a lot of stuff. It seems like uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, there is nothing uh, on, on, on the page. You can see it, but I'm, we're going to, to see that on, like, um, uh, in an example. So to be clearer. So wh why am, am I doing this just before I'm going deeper into this? Why are uh, I'm explaining this like algorithms and how they work? Uh, it's important well, when you're trying to use any, of course, if you can say like, okay, I want to get uh, like, I want to do the topic modeling. I want to know what is the topics we covered within some documents. And then I will just go and to look, I will go Google finds algorithm and just like use it there, right? So right away, I don't need to know how it works. But um, that would work to some extent. But the thing is that when you do that, you have when you use an algorithm, you have to know like the assumptions that are made to for for for, for this algorithm to work. There are assumptions usually, and you need to know if these assumptions apply to your case. Or if you like, so when you're making these assumptions, uh, is it okay? Like um, um, sometimes you are making some kind of, uh, um, uh, let's say, a sacrifice in a sense, or like something that doesn't apply. It's not realistic, but you have to know like the limitations. Basically, is what I want to say. You know the limitations that comes from that assumptions sometimes, and sometimes how the algorithm works. And of course, also you need this is something basic, but you need to know how like the format that you need to insert your data into like to this algorithm for it to work. Um, so just like yeah, this is blah blah blah. That's what I wanted to say. So okay, let's see here. Basically, each document will have like it will be represented as a matrix. This is the data. So each document will be represented in this matrix. Sorry, so these terms or words uh, will be like, uh, so the rows are the words, uh, the, the columns are the document, and uh, the matrix is filled by the numbers of times the terms appear in the document. So, um, so let's say the document here is talking about like uh, cats, for example, and then the term cat will appear like 10 times, then it should have 10 here, um, like, um, yeah, so something like that. Uh, then the, uh, the the technique that it works is basically like matrix decomposition, basically um, um, saying that this matrix that you get from your input data is equal to the the, the multiplication of um, a matrix um, of uh, of reduced dimensionality. Uh, okay, and that like uh, for reducing the dimensionality means uh, like uh, make make the analysis simpler. So okay, okay. So this is um, let's just bear with me. 
the next one we're going to discuss is the uh, latent uh i don't actually have to know how to pronounce it but okay allocated which is another one the bison network which is like a different kind of a statistical approach um and uh, this one makes a different assumption it assumes that like the words of current documents um uh, each word represents a particular topic and each document is made of a, a collection of topics and uh this this uh, this uh, this most most of these techniques treat the document as a back of word what is a back of word means is that just like they they completely ignore the structure of the text like this, of course the words in in, in a text uh, they come in a sequence um and the position of the word matters in the meaning of the of the of the text in general but these two these two these two algorithms um or these two approaches assume that this doesn't matter for our like the sequence of the order of words doesn't matter for the for the uh for the analysis and so they treat the document as as a bag of words and basically represented by just the occurrence of the number of like times the words appear in each document okay i know i said a lot of blah 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 if there is a question or i will just move to uh some kind of a demo or just like an application like application of this to um Okay, uh, just for it to load, is there is a okay? Is there is a, a like? Is there any question? Am I like? Are you completely lost, or can you follow along, or is it like even like too simple? Maybe you know. This. Any complaint? I'm asking. Is there is any complaint or any? Uh, question should I move on okay yes let's consider an example here okay so basically all right so as we discussed before we had to we have to data prepare the data for, uh, we have a data we start with the data corpus, which is made of only five documents, which is like very simple. So these are just sentences or like uh, a few, each one of the few sentences, like there is here, like um, for example, document one. Can you see my, let me trigger, like it, to make it. Okay, so you can see here, so this document, for example, this one is talking about the percentage of water on Earth and like covering 71% of the surface, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, about the atmosphere, so it's talking about the planet. Another subject is like uh, talking about sleep, um, school, something like it's just like, um, okay, so these are like just uh, each one of them is just like text uh short even it's not very long so it's not like the articles you have maybe in the in the in the data set you have but of course you can always uh, choose to truncate your data so um uh uh to, to truncate your data so that it, it's short it's shorter so instead of taking very long anyway um it makes the corpus which is made of this document with a list of these documents in the pre-processing step um we're going to be here is we are using the nlck uh, library which is um um uh yeah so it's a natural language toolkit so which is natural language processing in python um you can see i'm reading here the description from this one uh so uh here in 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 uh, in the pre preparation or pre processing sorry uh we're going to remove the stop word 
which is supports are just like this um, kind of a filler words like the above about which in this case we kind of um, decide that it's not they are not important for deciding which what is the topic of the of the document um we are gonna you we're gonna download also so these are like a data set that is available in this library uh we are going to remove the punctuations also uh we're going to you to do some to apply this uh limitizer which is basically um uh, a method to reduce uh, the words to their root so like um, for example um, run, run, and running uh, are all come from the root run. So, can like basically a limitizer is uh, uh, we reduce these words to their to their or to their root. So again, reducing the vocabulary that we have in our data, which means the data set we have to analyze in the end will be less, which will be make our analysis more efficient um what else um so uh basically yeah so this is the pre-processing part uh yeah. so we apply this uh, remove the supports and do this little size on on the on the function uh sorry on the on the documents on the corpus um and return a clean corpus here i say so we can see like what is the uh the Supports here. Let's see, like, um, each you our had them down. So, this is just like a, a data set that is ready in this library. And you can see, um, uh, like, I'm um, here, I'm just like, uh, this is the uh, document number three, basically. Uh, and here it was change, uh, it was transformed into a vector or a, a list, sorry, of words um, after this this uh, preparation. So we got a matrix basically made of uh, of uh, like each row is just a list of words. Um, okay. Next, we transform our data to a term document matrix, which is a mathematical representation. Um, but uh, which is made by counting the occurrence of each term in in each document and normalizing the counts. Uh, so basically, like uh, we use this uh, library, uh, which like this this function basically to, like creates a, dic a dictionary of the words in the in the corpus we have. Um, and each unique word is, is assigned a number, and then um, this or this function is basically change each uh, like uh, document or list into like um, the um, it will change it basically to this matrix uh, document terabyte matrix. So. Um, Uh, we can see this so now um this doc matrix i have to run everything first uh sorry um how are you telling me running anything like i want to see So yeah, so the let me just print one online. So and instead of a document before, so this before was a document which is just like uh uh so this text before it's a uh, text about the water on earth, and now it is changed to a list of um 
of two books, uh, which are like the first is um, the index of the word or the term in our corpus. And this is how many times it occurs. So you find like here, like these are the unique terms in our like uh, whole vocabulary in, in uh, this um, uh, in the corpus and this is how many times it occurs so most of them are of course only one time because of course the text is very short and we remove this uh, like stop uh, word and like but some appears uh, multiple times so this has to be like water or something or earth because it happened a couple of times in the and you can see like the like um, the length of each of these uh, list is not equal, so they're different. Uh, okay, so this is before before it was cleaned, and this is after it was. Um, so yeah. um, they actually increase because we we unified basically the the vocabulary that is used. Anyway. Uh, in the modeling part, sorry. Um, uh, it, it's like uh, here we're going to use just LS, uh, this um, LSA, uh, the Latin Somatic uh, Analysis. Um, and like uh, we can uh, tell it to decide like how how many topics we want to find, and um, um, and uh, like how many words to 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 identify each each topic with, and like this was like the result of it. So it found three topics because we told it to to, to do that, and it defined like a, a first the first topic is made of like represented by these uh, three words water percent and planet of course our data set is small so we're not finding something that is really um okay also the algorithm has limitations to begin with but okay with finding three different uh, different topics one is water and planet percent it's, it's not like relevant but it's it's fine it it thinks it's relevant Sleeping still an hour, and again there is one that is has um, water and rain. But okay. Uh, so basically, the output is topics for each line and the individual topic terms and their weights. So we can find like the weights are um, uh, all less than one. And um, okay, some positive, some negative, actually. Anyway, I feel like it's um, okay. Um, with the same, the same kind of data that was prepared the same way can be applied to other algorithm. And again, we can define the number of, of topics we want to use, and it finds. Uh, kind of well um they are different <laughs> the topics are different or they are defined differently uh with different weight but in the end the efficiency will be different the lda in principle is um i think is is uh so the is more like uh, okay so these are just like very simple techniques these are not like they are like um um uh how to say uh there are other ways to, to do this topic modeling for example we can use uh, transformers like these are with the ones that were linked in the in the challenge uh where there it was it used it is using a pre-trained um uh transformer model and uh there it's utilizing the embedding of uh, that was like uh identified or like trained by uh, this transformer model which is like a very big 
um, a neural network. Um, a neural network uh, model, okay, on the big uh, data set. So there, uh, of course, the accuracy could be better, or like the like consistency is not accuracy. There is is could be better, but uh, there are like a of course there are things to weigh when you want to use like. Um, a bigger model or a better model. Sometimes it comes with uh, cost, but I'm just I just wanted to 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 show these simpler or uh, techniques just uh, as a to show like the understanding behind it. Anyway, any questions so far? Because we're very I'm very I'm going so super slow. Any questions? I hope that like, I'm telling you clear. I feel like it's not. Um, I'm getting no reaction, so I'm thinking that it's not clear actually. One second. Hmm. Um, I'm sorry, uh, can you hear me? I'm just, I need a call, a clarification. Um, so I'm seeing question about like the presentation. Yes, the presentation will be loaded. Um, and the notebook also like you can have access to that. Like I can also like link you to the, uh, resources. Um, Okay, um, any other questions? Uh, I feel like these are from, um, okay, the other ones are from all the time. So let me just, um, yeah, I got uh, the notification that maybe I'm not, um, my voice is not clear, but it seems like uh, you can, you guys hear me, so uh, I'm moving on. Uh, okay, let's, um, go to sentiment analysis so yes yeah i i will if there will be differences in the end of the like these slides um okay so um uh sentiment analysis or like it's basically uh falls within the text classification. So the idea is that you want to take a text and then classify, uh, classify with what the sentiment it carries. So as was like, uh, you have this, that you, it's already done for you. So you don't have to do actually sentiment analysis, I think for this challenge, but you can see like you have title sentiment analysis, which was done basically by, by, an, by basically an algorithm like this. So it will take the title and decides whether it's uh, positive, negative, or neutral. And basically, this is a classification. Um, uh, again, okay. So it's a classification problem. Um, okay. So yeah, horse is like a different business problems that can be helped by sentiment analysis. Like, uh, of course, so it helps particularly with reviews, maybe like on products. Um, it's like, uh, it can be used for like automating, um, um, like 
or like clustering uh, reviews or doing like a quick analysis on on like um, on, on on different kinds of reviews basically so these are just kind all kinds of different reviews uh examples um i'm going over that okay so i'm not going to go into details about this but like yeah okay some simple techniques that do sentiment analysis will be like um what's called a naive bias classification which basically if you know what is a uh, like um what's a bias bias theorem or uh, which basically up uh, uh um <clears throat> updates a prior probability we have um to depending on the data we have so say that we have like uh, documents and we want to say like uh, there is probability that document sorry so text basically we're talking about text let's say the titles of these articles taking the title i'm not i don't uh, like my prior um let's say we have a prior expectation that like uh half of the like half of the titles will be positive and half the half of the titles will be negative something like that and this is will be a prior um uh probability that 50 percent are positive and then depending on the data we see in the training like we take uh, for this is a supervised um, training, supervised learning. So we will have like a data identified as positive or negative. Here I'm just ignoring the neutral sentiment, but it's it's there. But I'm just for for short. <laughs> I'm just saying positive or negative. But okay. Um, say we are going going to like uh, classify them as either positive or negative for for this example, and. Um, and then looking at our training data which is labeled or classified already so we will get the title and its classification as positive or negative so like uh, I, I cannot think of an example but let's say um uh okay let's say the one title was that like uh, um the Carnival celebration were a huge success. I'm just making something something up, but this is a positive a positive title, obviously. Um, uh, and then um, a negative title will be like uh, something about war or something. And this uh, okay, we have like a set of training data, all labeled or assigned as either positive or negative. And then, um, as I said, like the main idea of, of bias theorem is that like you update the um, um, uh, the the probability you you assume in the beginning, depending on the data you say you see. Uh, here, what we're talking about is like is going to the the analysis is going to look at word by word, basically. So. Is, is again is going to look as at a document of or a text as a bag of words again so it will be represented as just um, a collection of words that uh, uh, appear um, uh, with some frequency and uh, this uh, well this like mathematical formula is just saying that what is the probability uh, of uh, of the, some classification, sentiment classification, given the document we see, and it will be equal to like um, the probability of the of the of the document appearing or the as a bag of words, as a collection of words, a given if it's uh, given some sentiment, if it's positive. And then, like uh, multiplied by the prior and some normalization factor. Uh, anyway, and the and the basically the learning will be, or the the algorithm will be trying to maximize the probability. Basically, mo looking for the most likely sentiment, depend uh, depending on like the the training data it has. Okay, this is just like blah 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 explaining this uh but this is a very basic uh, um 
algorithm. I, I wanted to mention it because I wanted to mention that it makes some assumptions. First of all, it makes it treats the uh, the text as I said as a bag of words. But think of of any sentence in your head that, like, uh, for example, here this this text this, this sorry, I always do this. Sorry. So take the sentence. Assume position does not matter. For example. And now treat it as just a collection of words. So I have a word matter, I have the word does, I have the word position, I have the word assume, and I have the word not. It's not easy to see, like, you can get the meaning of the sentence if you have it like just a random collection of words, right? So this is an assumption that's made to simplify, because to apply this simple technique, because it's very simple, or it's simple to, to, to simplify it, actually. Another uh, assumption that is made is that uh, the con is independent, the conditional independence assumption, which makes that like um, uh, the the dependence of the sentiment on a particular word doesn't depend on the whatever other words that appear with it. It's not just like it's treating the document as a collection of words. It's actually treating that the sentiment, the classification depends on a, a particular word separately Hello. or whatever oh, sorry we are not seeing your screen please yeah, really oh, i'm sorry so sorry yeah i stopped sharing screen early very early oh my god you should have spoke me earlier i'm so sorry um okay yeah i've been explaining uh Okay, all oh, right. So I have been going through sentiment analysis all this time without you seeing my screen, which is bad. I'm very sorry. Uh, now you see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I was explaining sentiment analysis and um, I was explaining this formula, which is like how the, what is called the knife bias classification works. Um, I'm not going to go through it again, but um, basically maximizes a likelihood based on like what is, what it sees on the training. It basically looks at the training data looks at the words that make whatever, like each document and how it was classified. And then um, given this, uh, it will give us like the maximum, the likelihood or the, the sentiment that will make the likelihood, uh, uh, the, like have the maximum likelihood um, appearing depending on the on the words on the like this new the, this is a prediction so a prediction in the new priorly unseen document will ma maximize the likelihood of of like the sentiment um appearing depending on the words that is that up there okay uh, I'm just saying, like, uh, okay, so this this form I'm not expecting you to understand right away, but uh, I'm just wanted to uh, point out that there are assumptions made in this in this uh, analysis. One is that it treats the text as a bag of words, basically saying like, okay, the sequence of words or the order of words doesn't matter, which is you know, um, is an assumption or like. Um, it's a simplification that, of course, is not actually true. Of course, the sequence of words matters. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. Um, uh, we make it uh, they we make it because we think like okay, it will reduce the the uh, the accuracy, but uh, by paying by reducing also the co the computational complexity because if we don't make this assumption the the computation complexity will be very huge and i will not be able to do this so 
uh, another assumption is that it is assumed that like uh, con the dependence or the sentiment depends on words separately, independent of what other words are uh, appears. So, um, so basically, like each word has a particular um, indication of a sentiment, independent of whatever word it appears with, and independent of the order or the position it appears to which if you think about how language works is not true at all uh, but we get some kind of accuracy with these assumptions but we have to keep in mind again that's what i wanted to say we have to keep in mind that it makes some kind of assumptions which it would have some kind of limitations depending on that we will consider that of course this is just a simple analysis we can also do use deep learning to 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 do sentiment analysis again uh, it will use word embedding which each word is embedded as, is encoded as a real value vector high dimensional space depending on like the data it was trained on it's the vocabulary of the model basically and um and the similarity between words is like it's translated to closeness of in the vector space or like the closeness of the angle between two vectors. So vectors are which are like represent words which are similar in meaning will be almost parallel to each other, which have like a, a small angle between them, and words which are like uh, really not opposite of each other will be like uh, on different like uh, will be very very big angle between them. I'm just explaining in words what should be like actually represented. <laughs> it would be have been nicer to be have a drawing here, but anyway, uh, this is just I'm just saying things that you I'm not expecting that you really get this from what I'm explaining here, but just to give you a flavor. So um, we can use a neural network model or a combination neural neural model and get the really good accuracy from it depending of course you have to use some train you have to train your um your model on on uh, on the data set um uh, that is labeled already okay uh okay so this is that's it for sentiment analysis any questions uh, Um, okay, so because we are running out of time, uh, we're not going to show. There was a, a simple demo actually on this uh, uh, naive biased uh, algorithm, but it's not. Like, we're going to skip it. And um, uh, we just talk uh, very shortly about time and uh, time series analysis and just like, yeah, so time series data is data that changes with time. So when you have a uh, data that is like, uh, uh, for example, uh, rainfall measurement, uh, like uh, during the year, um, automated stock trading day by day with changes, uh, temperature reading by day also, or like uh, changes with time. Um, and then all of these things you can, you want to also, you can think like, the measurement in the future will depend at least partially on the measurements in the past so you might, might use this past data to forecast the future or you can also do analysis to see the trends with time if there are seasonality or like if there are like um, let's just see for example this is uh, the data on like uh, <clears throat> railway passenger data so the number of passengers passing during the time of day so these are hours zero to four like uh, so so it's the hours of the day and uh you can see uh there are like uh, trends basically the there are increase increase with time right from from zero to two so during the day you have more people riding the train but there are also cyclic pattern or seasonality so you see like with like um basically like uh starting from like the hour on the dot or something 
the the number of people reduces it may might be just a guess like when the like the the train comes or something so there is some kind of uh we at least we see so, some seasonality so the seasonality means that there is a rise and fall that uh like changes with a fixed uh, uh, amount of time so a fixed um, interval so for an interval of like almost one hour you can see the changes repeat so as falls goes up falls goes up with the fixed in a fixed interval but there is also if you ignore the seasonality if you smooth it out you can see that is at all it's it's like overall it's increasing the time okay so these are just like explanation of like um, very simple um terms um okay there are different types of again time series analysis um you might want to do like some descriptive analysis to see like what is our the pattern the trend the cycle the seasonal variation um mm -hmm. you can see like if it's uh, fit some kind of a relationship uh with other values so we do some curve fitting um um you can also do some like analysis try to see like if there is a correlation between um the 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 data and its health in the past or like it's uh, there is a correlation very with between it and other um variables uh so the kind of uh, method that you can use um are like uh, there are like classical and statistical models there are moving averages which means that you just like average uh, over like a so for example, here we can take like a period of one of two hours and average the, all the values on, on this and then move with time, like move our window, consider a window of two hours maybe, and then like average over that and keep moving our, our window as we move along with time. So instead of having this variation, we will have some kind of a smooth, a smoothness. So this was it's called like, um, um, this is moving average. There are different kinds of uh, moving averages that can be used. Uh, um, exponential is, is smoothing is another way of doing that. There is like uh, this method of uh, um, autoregression, integrated moving average. Um, and another one that's for seasonal component of the series. This can be applied. So these are statistical methods, just yes, statistics. They're also using machine learning. We can use linear regression. Uh, you can use that, like, of course, you can uh, do, like, of course, you can apply this auto regression, like, um, using machine learning. So basically, you are regressing the data with itself in the past, which is not, um, um, you can also do this with deep learning, uh, which have, like, a recurrent neural networks, um, which was basically, uh, exactly designed to deal with uh, data that changes with time and uh, so and LSTMs also um, which was like uh, uh, even an improvement on that okay uh, so this is it let's see if there are questions uh, I'm sorry that we make them not as comprehensive as it should be or maybe um I, I actually struggled to like um to fix the like uh, the level of it of of the i hope that you got something out of this um uh, uh all right so any questions i'm going to look at the, at the i see like that um okay Okay, of course I'm going to share the demo, so there are no new questions here. Um, any question from you? Any something that you want some clarification on? Yeah, so. Okay. 
we are out of time you know so let's just like give it a couple of minutes All right, so since no one is coming out of uh, asking, so I'm um, taking this as a, okay, some kind of a sign. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here. I think I'm going to, we're going to end the session here. Um,